Thank you for tuning back in. Uh, we're interviewing Dr. Zeno, and he just told us that with smoking cigarettes, even if we don't smoke, if we come in contact with people who do smoke and it's in their clothes, we are affected. My, my. Dr. Zeno, let's look at colon cancer. Cool. What are cancer. some preventive things that we can do as it relates to colon cancer? All right. Anybody, uh, it, it, any child who understands will know that if we, what we eat mm -hmm. goes into our mouths and then something has to come out on right, the other side, right, all right? Right, Kids understand that. Mm -hmm. Well, what we put into our mouths get uh, worked on by our gastrointestinal tract. And then what is left over added to some of the things that the body has to excrete in the gastrointestinal tract, that's what goes out, uh, accumulates in the colon, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we pass it out mm -hmm. uh, when we use the toilet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we eat foods that already have carcinogens, this will cause these carcinogens to accumulate and therefore affect the environment in which the cells in our colon live. So you're going back to that soup again. I'm going again. back to the soup again, okay? <laughs> so we eat carcinogens. Mm -hmm. It will increase the concentration of these carcinogens in the colon, mm -hmm. and that will create an environment in which those cells can become carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. That's one. Number two, mm -hmm. no pun intended, if we eat food that does not have fiber, then the amount of buildup is greater in the colon because we're not able to get it out as quickly because the fiber facilitates bulk and the evacuation frequently of the stool. So where would you find, what are the fiber-rich foods? Okay. Uh, we're not talking about the fiber that you get uh, <laughs> in the store <laughs> uh, to make furniture and stuff. It's not that fiber. Mm -hmm. It's actually the naturally occurring fibers that we find in plants. So in fruits, grains, vegetables, legumes, nuts, and seeds. That's what about it. meat? Meat. Ah, meat has muscle fiber. That is not dietary fiber. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the muscle fiber, that doesn't work. Okay, You need to have the plant fiber. And there are two kinds of those plant okay. fibers. There's a soluble fiber and an insoluble fiber. The insoluble one doesn't, doesn't digest in the water, doesn't uh, right, you know, right. um, dissolve in the water. And therefore, this, uh, this produces bulk and mm -hmm. therefore allows us to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to get rid of it. Because one of the mm -hmm. stimuli for, uh, for the urge to go to the bathroom is actually the buildup of bulk in, in the colon. The soluble fiber, it also has some beneficial effects mm -hmm. with regard to cancer, but it has greater beneficial effects with regard to heart disease. Okay. So you need both kinds of, of fiber in the diet. So are you saying that the more plant-rich foods we eat, the we're, we're lowering our risk for cancer? Yes, That helps to evacuate the colon? Mm -hmm. Just eating plants, a plant-based diet? Look, it goes even better than this, okay? If you take just meat yes. and you take plants, mm -hmm. right? You get a double effect because meats have more carcinogens. So if you reduce the amount of meat, mm -hmm. even if you don't increase the amount of plants, mm -hmm. you get a benefit. Second, if you kept the same amount of meat, but you ate more plants... Mm -hmm. because of the fiber and the phytochemicals, the special uh, mm -hmm. uh, chemicals that are in the plants, mm -hmm. you actually will decrease your risk of cancer. So if you do both, wow. you have an accumulative effect because you'll reduce the amount of uh, carcinogens and you will increase the amount of protective factors, both at the same time. So someone uh, who wants to make a change in their diet and reduce their risk of colon cancer, mm -hmm. uh, especially if colon cancer is in the family, mm -hmm. right? You will want to be able to make this kind of change because you don't want to get cancer. I don't know of anybody who says, I want to get this kind of cancer. But anyway, mm -hmm. 
If you want to reduce that risk, then what you would what you'd want to do is to reduce the amount of meat and increase the amount of plant-based foods. So you eat more fruits, grains, vegetables, legumes, that's beans, beans. nuts, and seeds. Right? Hmm. This is what you do. Uh, and that will help to produce a better situation because it produces better soups. Now, there are a whole host of other things uh, that can be involved, but I just want to give the single take-home message, right? Okay. So change your diet, and you will change your risk of colon cancer. There's no question that what you put in your mouth is going to have an effect on what goes on uh, in that gastrointestinal tract. I believe you. What about breast cancer, though? That's colon cancer, but what about breast cancer? What about cancer? breast cancer? Can we do anything to really reduce our risk, especially with this triple gene that you were talking about? Yeah, triple I negative mean, stuff. I mean, yeah, just, I mean. Okay. Uh, we, we have lots of, of studies looking at different, different ways to reduce breast cancer risk. Right. Let me, let me go... Uh, let me deviate from what I was saying before I give you the, the bottom line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a few more mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. things to kind of round this one mm -hmm, off. Mm -hmm. We know that the same things that increase the risk of diabetes increase the risk of breast cancer. Please explain. Yeah, the same kind of lifestyle that increases the risk of diabetes. That is a lifestyle that is sedentary. Right. One that is, uh, you use high fats in the diet, mm -hmm. you're overweight, mm -hmm. okay? You, you put these things together, you increase the risk of diabetes. You increase your risk of coronary artery disease, heart attacks. Right. You increase your risk of hypertension, and you increase your risk of breast cancer. Mm. As a matter of fact, if you have diabetes, you have a 40% greater risk of developing breast cancer. And if you are a breast cancer survivor, you okay. have an increased risk of developing diabetes. Okay? Mm. So these things are linked together because the same kind of lifestyle actually produces both. Wow. So That's interesting. So for a woman who wants to reduce her risk of breast cancer, notice I, I didn't say a person because right. you know men also can get breast cancer. That's the, true. the rate for breast cancer in men is like 1%. Right. Okay? Right. Uh, so men do get breast cancer as well. But for women who want to reduce breast cancer, right, they need to be looking at the overall total health. Okay? And the overall total health has to do with how they live. They're getting enough exercise. They're not sitting around. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not overweight. Mm -hmm. right? And they're not eating the high-fat, uh, you know, sugar-loaded uh, foods. And one more thing. What's that? They're not drinking alcohol. Okay. okay, one drink a day increases the risk of breast cancer in women by 10%. By 10%? One drink a day, okay? So if you drink two, day, two drinks a day, that's 20% that increased 20 risk. and three? Three drinks a day, 30% 30 30 increased risk. Mm. So I ask people, where do you want to draw the line for your risk? <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh and they tell me. This is how it goes. Dr. Zeno, you're mm -hmm. not sparing any punches, are you? Well, you know, we only had half an hour on this segment. I know. And uh, if, if people want to hear the straight story, and you only have a little bit of time, you have to tell it to, tell it to them straight, right? So I have to tell them straight. We, it's time for a break. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a few moments as Dr. Zeno closes us out with reducing risk for prostate cancer and then some general recommendations for reducing our overall risk for cancer. I hope you're enjoying this. It's sobering, but it's, it's what we need. Thank you so much. <laughs> 